to give me a local news update. Hey, Philip, here's your news. Good evening, and we begin tonight with the breaking news on Donald Trump's criminal trial. The jury fully seated. Opening arguments begin Monday. Questions now about the first witness. Also tonight, hear the awful scene outside court today. A man nearby setting himself on fire. Witnesses seeing it all. The man engulfed in flames. EMTs with fire extinguishers rushing him to the hospital. He's in critical condition tonight. Meantime, inside the courtroom, the judge declaring, we have completed jury selection of this case. 12 jurors and six alternates all sworn in. They will hear this case. They will determine Donald Trump's fate. ABC senior investigative correspondent Aaron Petrusky leading us off outside the courthouse again tonight. Tonight, the jury of 12 is set. Six alternate jurors picked and opening statements set to begin in the historic first ever criminal trial of a former American president. But this afternoon, as Donald Trump sat before the judge, a major security scare playing out just steps away from the Manhattan courthouse. Chaos and horror as a man hurled pamphlets into the air, then set himself on fire. An eyewitness speaking with ABC's Olivia Rubin. I heard someone screech, and he's in the corner, and there's this, he's this guy who just starts dousing himself with fuel, and he is just lit himself on fire. The man who police identified as 37-year-old Max Azzarello, a resident of Florida, swarmed by law enforcement who put out the flames and transported him to the hospital, where tonight he's in critical condition. Police say he posted a host of bizarre anti-government conspiracy theories online under this headline. I have said myself on fire outside the Trump trial. The pamphlets seem to be propaganda based, uh, almost like a conspiracy theory type of uh, pamphlet. While all this was going on, Donald Trump was never in any danger. The former president safely inside watching his lawyers wrapped up jury selection. The panel comprised of seven men and five women. There are six alternates, five women and one man, any of whom could jump in if needed. And with this case, that's not a stretch. Today we saw the stress even potential jurors were facing. One woman telling the court, I have really bad anxiety. More and more people in my life know that I'm here without me even telling them, just by putting the pieces together. She was immediately excused. Another woman dismissed after she broke down in tears. Trump, whose eyes were closed, opening them to look at her, she said, I feel so nervous and anxious right now. I'm sorry. I thought I could do this. 174 prospective jurors were dismissed since the trial began. Trump, a lifelong New Yorker, listening for days on end as dozens of people told the court what they thought of him. Some had praise. One man calling Trump a family man and a businessman who brought a lot of value to the economy. Another man was confronted with social media posts where he had described the former president with the words sociopathic incompetence, adding, I do believe that he is actually the devil. With Trump watching intently, Judge Juan Lashon asked the man if those posts still reflected his opinion. It's not far off base, he responded, and was immediately excused. And with jury selection now over, Trump's lawyers made one last ditch effort to delay the trial, but an appeals court turned them down. So let's get right back to Aaron Kaczorski live outside the court again tonight. Aaron, opening statements on Monday. We still don't know the first witness. We don't, David, because prosecutors refuse to reveal the name, fearing if they do, Trump would only go on the attack. And the judge said, under the circumstances, that's understandable. He said there's nothing else to clarify, nothing else to argue. The judge was plain, David, opening arguments starting Monday. Tonight, there are new images just in after Israel has now retaliated after Iran's first ever direct attack on Israeli soil. Tonight, here you will see the new satellite images of the damage inside Iran. And where does this go from here? ABC's back up in, in Israel again tonight. Tonight, Israel striking back inside Iran, retaliating for Tehran's first ever direct attack on Israel. The pinpoint strike happening shortly before dawn. Videos circulating online appearing to show explosions in the distance. 
in senior U.S. official telling ABC News Israeli fighter jets firing at least three missiles from outside Iranian airspace, destroying an air defense radar site that protects the Natanz nuclear facility in central Iran, but that nuclear facility, not the intended target. New satellite images released today showing damage near this Iranian airbase. The strike meant to send a message to Tehran that Israel is capable of penetrating even Iran's most sensitive sites, analysts say. We're not just going to go after the tentacles of the octopus, we're going to go after its head. ABC News learning that Israel notified the U.S. shortly before its attack. Secretary of State Antony Blinken making it clear today the U.S. had nothing to do with the strike. The United States has not been involved in any offensive operations. Uh, what we're focused on is our work to de-escalate uh, tensions. Iran also appearing to de-escalate, drawing a curtain of secrecy over the attack, saying there was no damage, no casualties, and blaming it on infiltrators, not directly pointing the finger at Israel. And Israel also projecting business as usual, with not a single official comment from the government or the military. But sources say the limited nature of Israel's response, signaling an effort to avoid a wider war after weeks of escalating tensions. Israel's airstrike on Iran's consulate in Syria that killed some of its top commanders. And then Iran's response, that unprecedented barrage of 300 drones and missiles into Israel. So what happens now? Do Israel and Iran not at attack each other directly anymore? I think this round is over. Both fighters are going to leave the ring, but they'll be back. We will see Matt Cutlin with us live from Tel Aviv again tonight. Matt, of course, back to that senior U.S. official who said today Israel destroyed that radar site near an Iranian nuclear facility. Uh, the U.S. official saying this is clearly meant to send a message, but I'm curious, do U.S. authorities believe this is it for now? They do, but remember, analysts are telling us that if they've learned anything over the past couple of weeks, it's how unpredictable this conflict can be and how quickly it can change. Remember, when that strike happened, there was concern of an all-out war between Israel and Iran. Both sides now downplaying it, de-escalating, and there's now a real sense of relief here. Alexa, stop the news. Alexa. Give me the forecast for Lewiston, Maine, for the next seven days. Good afternoon, Philip. In Lewiston for the next seven days, Monday, 52 degrees Fahrenheit and lots of sun. Tuesday, 58 degrees and intermittent clouds. Wednesday, 49 degrees and rainy weather. Thursday, 50 degrees and mostly sunny weather. Friday, 59 degrees and mostly sunny weather. Saturday, 63 degrees and mostly sunny weather. Sunday, 63 degrees and intermittent clouds. Alexa, give me a sports update. Here's your sports update. In basketball, yesterday, the Celtics beat the Heat 114-94. to Celtics and Heat are facing off on Wednesday, April 24th at 7 p.m. In baseball, yesterday, the Red Sox beat the Pirates 6-1. And the Guardians and Red Sox game is tomorrow evening at 6-10 p.m. Alexa, thank you. My pleasure. Just doing my job.